Hello everyone, I'm Arpit from Czech Tutors. I'm a tutor at Czech for Mathematics and Statistics. And today we are going to discuss degree of freedom. So let's start with the definition of degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom in a statistical calculation represent how many values involved in a calculation have the freedom to vary. So what this definition is saying, inside a data set, suppose we have a data set, and we have a data set and it's having elements. So inside the data set, how many elements have the freedom to vary? So this definition will become more clear once we look up uh, through an example. So before we go to an example, let's look at the formula for degree of freedom. It's denoted by df and its formula is n minus 1. This is a very simple formula. Here we just have n minus 1. And our n is, it could be number of elements inside a data set, number of players inside the team. It could be pretty much anything, just something like that. So let's start with an example so that we can get more clear for the definition. So here we have a data set of four elements, A, B, C, and D. And these elements represent numbers. And the sum of the numbers is going to be, let's say, 100. So we know right now that we have four numbers, and A, B, C, and D, and they add up to 100. So let's try to figure out what these number can be. So what can be the first number A? Well, does it have any limitation or boundaries that, uh, well, no. We can choose anything from negative infinity to positive infinity. Like we can choose negative 50, we can choose anything like 0, we can choose something positive like 50, 100, even greater than 100. Because whatever we choose, if we make it, we can always counterbalance that value with the remaining three values. So, as long as we are, we can counterbalance the value, we have the freedom to choose that number. So, for the first value, we choose, let's say, 50. Now, what can we choose for B, C, and D? Well, now B, let's look at B, it, B for now. So for B, we can choose again anything from negative infinity to positive infinity because B does not have any restrictions as well. Because whatever we choose for B could be counterbalanced in the remaining two terms to make it equals 200. So let's try to choose something greater than 50. Let's say we choose 70. All right. So now we chose 70 and we are already the sum is already more than 100. So, is this a problem? Well, no. We can still counterba counterbalance that 120 to 100 by choosing a negative value in our C or our D. So, let's say we choose, uh, so right now in C, we can either choose anything from positive infinity to negative infinity. So to get a better understanding, let's say we choose, um, Let's say 30. We could have chosen any negative number, positive number, or zero. So we chose 30 because we did not have any restrictions or limitations in the part C, in the number C. So now we came up to the last number, 4, like which is D. So now this, do we have that freedom that we were having in A, B, and C inside the D? Well, no, because the sum is already... 50 plus 70 plus 30, which sums up to be 130. And let's say our D is X. So what, what should we choose for X to make it 100? So let's see, the sum of the first three numbers is 150 plus the fourth number, which is X, which is X. equals 100 so we see now we are logged in in the fourth number x we have to choose x equals 200 minus 150 which equals to negative 50 
And by choosing our fourth number as negative 50, we end up with a sum of 100. So this example shows us clearly that in a data set of four elements, we have the freedom to vary in the first three elements. And inside the fourth element, we were logged in and we had to choose a certain value to get to the desired sum. So this is the concept of de degree of freedom. If this was a data set of seven elements, we would have had the degree of freedom in the first six elements and, and the seventh element will be logged in. So we can see the formula again, df equals and minus one. As long as you remember this formula for degree of freedom, you shouldn't have any problems finding out the degree of freedom. So that's it for degree of freedom for now. And if you have any other questions, you can find me at Check Tutor and at this link. Feel free to message me and I'll reply you back and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thank you and have a wonderful day.